Let me first take this opportunity of congratulating Prime Minister Blair. In addition to everything that, uh, that Zach Schreiber just said about him, he's also an author of a fantastic new memoir called A Journey, My Political Life. I say it's fantastic because I've had the, the distinct honor and pleasure of reading all 682 pages of it. <laughs> Lots of fascinating passages, revealing passages, even humorous passages. But I'd like to begin, Prime Minister Blair, by asking you about a theme that you just focused your remarks and recalling a passage from your book about this. And I quote, after September 11th, quote, it's precisely here that I made a mistake. I misunderstood the depth of the challenge. I was ignorant of the pervasive nature of the phenomenon. The battle is not, I'm afraid, one between a small, unrepresentative group of extremists and the rest of us. It is not at least only that. It is also a fundamental struggle for the heart, mind, and soul of Islam. To win does not require simply a military strategy. It requires a whole new geopolitical framework. It requires nation building, a myriad of interventions into the affairs of other nations. It requires, above all, a willingness to see the battle as existential and to see it through, to take the time, spend the treasure, and spend the blood, shed the blood, believing that not to do so is only to postpone the day of reckoning. Well, how are we doing in this battle? Who's winning, the good guys or the bad guys? Well, first of all, Rob, thank you very much for having read the book. Um, I mean, I wish, I wish you hadn't pointed out it was 680 pages long. I don't want, you, I don't want that to put any of you off, OK? Um, and it also allows me to be, one of the things I do in the book, actually, is I break up the chapters into different sort of topics. You know, I just like to tell you that. I still find, in fact, what a lot of people in America remember for is after the, um, you know, I frequently bump into people here and they say to me, after the, 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 the film, The Queen, you know, they say, oh, I did like you in that movie. Uh, <laughs> and you think, I was prime minister 10 years, that's all they remember, but anyway. Um, uh, how are we doing in it? Well, look, I think we're uh, in the middle of it, actually. I mean, I think the, the, the thing that I, I have come to realize, and one rather shocking admission, because I spend so much time out in the Middle East now, I mean, my understanding, I think, of this issue is profoundly deeper than it was when I was prime minister, which is, uh, you know, as I say, it is a bit of a shocking admission. But you just, you realize that there is something that has gone on over a long period of time of which we are now, you know, this is a harvest now being reaped, right? But the, the sowing was done a long time ago. And this harvest, which is very bitter and difficult, it, is, it can't be explained by saying it's a few extremists who are on the fringe. Um, you know, I, one of the points I, I was trying to make this evening is that if you actually examine um, the education systems of many of the parts, many of the parts of the world we're talking about now, I really don't know why we're surprised we've got a problem. Because people are not being educated in many of these countries to peaceful coexistence. They're actually being educated um, to an exclusive view of religion. And certainly so far as Israel is concerned, I mean, a, an antipathy that is not about the failure of the peace process, but about the existence of the state. And so I think, you know, we've just got to, to understand this is, I, I mean, I liken it to revolutionary communism. You know, this is something that will take a long time for us to work our way through. We will beat it in the end, but it, it's, we're, we're, I'm afraid, only in the middle of it. In your remarks, you made um, a very important and powerful statement about the ingredients of Arab-Israeli peace. Uh, and in your book, uh, you have one very clear statement about the missing ingredient to make 
the peace process successful. And I quote, the biggest problem with the Middle East peace process is that no one has ever gripped it long enough or firmly enough. The gripping is intermittent. And intermittent won't do. It doesn't work. If it was gripped, it would be solved. Now, a few moments ago, when we had Bill Clinton offering his remarks last year uh, on our tape, um, he made a case about how it's up to the Arabs and Israelis, Israelis and Palestinians. No matter what I could do, it was theirs to grab. Is this a contradiction, or, or do um, they go hand in hand? I think, to be fair, he, he did grip it and actually came close to it. But, but he, here's, here's what I, this is my understanding now, as opposed to when I was prime minister. I actually think the, the key problem in the conflict, nowadays when I'm trying to explain it to people, I say, go and look at a map first. And look at a map of the region, and then you look at a map of Israel and the Palestinian territory. And you realize it's a tiny, really a tiny piece of land, okay? The problem is not that you couldn't resolve the borders or even very tricky issues like Jerusalem and refugees, you could. I think the problem is that you have to get an alignment between the reality on the ground and the prospect of peace. And by that I mean that, that essentially both sides have a reality on the ground issue. For the Israelis, it's security, and for the Palestinians, it's occupation, and the two are linked. And the one thing that should give us hope over these past two or three years isn't, this is work that I've been helping do, but, but the credit should go to Prime Minister Fayyad and the Palestinian Authority. This idea of building the Palestinian state from the bottom up, I think, is absolutely essential, because a state is not just about borders. It's about governance. It's about institutional capacity. It's about security and the rule of law. You know, it's, it's about the economy. And in my view, the way to resolve this is to get a political negotiation top down that is being met by this building of the state and its effectiveness from the bottom up. And, you know, the fact of the matter is, if the Palestinians can run their territory with one rule of law, one security force, in a way that gives Israel confidence, then we can get peace. But if Israel ends up thinking it's going to get, from Gaza, it's going to get Hamas on the West Bank, you know, it's, it's not going to take that risk with its security. And, and I wouldn't if I was the Israeli Prime Minister. So I think, you know, it's a, when you get down to this, it's in that sort of vortex of security, occupation, economy, institution building that the key to this really lies. And that's why it has to be gripped constantly, not intermittently, because these things take time to establish. Do you believe that within one year, the Israelis and Palestinians can reach an outline of an agreement? Oh, there's a bit of cynicism there amongst the audience. <laughs> I was, um, mind you, that's probably the reaction of most people in the world right now. But, um, okay, I'm going to be bold and say yes. Uh, and that is not because I'm simply a crazy optimist, although I am. Um, it, it's, it's because if we get the right strategy for resolving this, we can. Look, I spend a lot of time both with the leadership of the Palestinians and most recently I've spent hours and days of time with Prime Minister Netanyahu. And I am absolutely convinced both of them want peace. I, I believe that. The people want peace. The problem for the people is not that they don't want peace, they've just given up on the prospect of getting it. So my point is, you know, leave aside all the failed attempts up to now. We had 40 years of failed attempts in Northern Ireland. In fact, some people would say we had several hundred years of failed attempts in Northern Ireland. In the end, these things can be done. And frankly, at this juncture in our world security, it absolutely must be done. So whatever it takes, we should go and do it. 